Let's take a look at some reasons why we prefer democracy over dictatorship. Democracy promotes equality among citizens and enhances the dignity of the individual. It improves the quality of decision making, provides a method to resolve conflicts, and allows room for correction. Democracy is seen to be good in principle, but not in practice. We know that democratic countries the world over follow democracy differently. Depending on their social situations, economic achievements, and cultures. However, there are certain basic outcomes we expect out of every democracy. As a political outcome of democracy, we expect an accountable, responsive, and legitimate government. As an economic outcome, we expect that democracies produce economic growth and development and reduce poverty and inequality. As a social outcome, we expect democracy to accommodate the social diversity in a society and provide dignity and freedom to all citizens. When such expectations are not met, we start blaming democracy. What we need to understand is that democracy is just a form of government. It can only create suitable conditions for us. As citizens, we have to take advantage of those conditions and achieve our goals. Democracy provides us the right to choose our rulers and have control over them. We expect that our rulers, the government, should be effective and efficient. An effective government follows procedures to arrive at decisions. Although this may be time-consuming, it ensures that the decisions are acceptable to all. Because the decision-making process is based on norms and procedures, citizens have the rights and means to examine the decisions. Thus, the government is accountable to its citizens. Further, we expect the government to be attentive to the needs of its people and be free of corruption. Keeping all these factors in mind, we can say that the expected political outcome of democracy is an accountable, responsive and legitimate government. Let's see how we can measure each factor. The first measure of accountability is regular, free and fair elections. The second measure is open public debate on major policies and legislations. The third measure is the citizens' right to information about the government and its functioning. So, where do we stand on all these measures? Democracies have displayed a mixed record on each measure. We do have regular elections and also public debates. But how effective are the elections and debates? Largely, democratic governments do not have a very good record when it comes to sharing information with its citizens. The Right to Information RTI Act is a law enacted by the Parliament of India giving citizens the right to access the records of the central government and the state governments. It was introduced to empower citizens to resist the misuse of authority and maintain transparency. Under the provisions of the Act, any citizen may request information from a public authority who is required to reply expeditiously or within 30 days.
Let's look at the second factor of political outcome, responsiveness. We expect a government to be attentive to our needs and wants and to be free of corruption. So, how do most democracies fare on this outcome? Democracies often ignore the needs and wants of its citizens. Moreover, corruption is a rampant evil in most places. Democracies have been successful on the third factor, legitimacy. Although a democratic government may be slow, less efficient and not always clean, it is a legitimate government because it is the people's own government. Democracy is the most preferred form of government based on its political outcome of accountability, responsiveness and legitimacy. When we compare the growth rate of all democracies and dictatorships between 1950 and 2000, we see that democratic countries have underperformed as compared to dictatorial ones. However, when it comes to less developed countries, the difference between dictatorships and democracies is negligible. Along with good governance, we also expect democracies to create economic growth and development. While democracy does not guarantee economic development, we can expect democratic countries to speed up their economic development measures. Did you know, India is the 12th largest economy in the world by market exchange rates. By 2008, India had established itself as the world's second fastest growing major economy. More than development, we expect democracies to reduce poverty and economic inequality. Now, we know that democracies are based on political equality. All individuals have equal power and hold equal weightage in electing representatives. Unfortunately, along with political equality, we find growing economic inequalities. For example, if you look at our own country, one third of the global poor live in India despite the high economic growth rate. Did you know, Tanzania is the third biggest gold producer in Africa with decent economic growth. Yet, the country remains one of the poorest in the world. With the poor in majority, shouldn't democracy be a rule of the poor? The poor constitute a larger proportion of the voters and every party focuses on them while campaigning. Yet, the democratically elected members do not address the problems of the poor, contrary to what one expects them to do. The situation is bad in several so-called democratic countries. More than half of the population in Bangladesh lives in poverty. People in several countries depend upon the rich countries even for their food supplies. On the whole, we can conclude that though democracies cannot remove inequality completely, we can minimize the degree of disparity by progressive planning. Democracies usually develop procedures to accommodate various social divisions that exist within the country. To a large extent, this helps reduce explosive and violent tensions in society. The ability to handle social differences, divisions and conflicts is a distinct advantage of democracy. Thus, democracy is best suited to produce the first social outcome, accommodation of social diversity. To achieve this social outcome, a democracy must fulfill two conditions. The first condition is that the majority needs to work with the minority to help the government represent a general view of all citizens. Secondly, rule by majority does not mean rule by a certain religion, race or linguistic group that is in majority. Majority rule should not lead to tyranny of the majority.
majority rule means that in case of every decision or election, different persons and groups can form a majority. Every citizen should have a chance of being in the majority at some point of time. Democracy also stands superior in the second social outcome, promoting dignity and freedom of the individual. All citizens should be equal before the law and have equal access to power. Conflicts arise when individuals are not treated with the respect they deserve. One of the chief elements of a democratic society is respect to and equal treatment of women. In a historically male-dominated society, women have struggled to gain the respect and equality they deserve. Thanks to a democratic setup, the principle of equality has a moral and legal recognition. It thus becomes easier for women to struggle against what is legally and morally unacceptable. Similarly, in a democracy, the disadvantaged and discriminated castes can also claim their right to equal status and equal opportunity. Although caste-based inequalities and atrocities continue to exist even today, they lack moral and legal foundations. People will always have expectations and complaints about the way democracy functions. This by itself is an indication that people have developed awareness and expect those in power to be accountable to citizens. Most people today realize that their vote matters. It gives them a say in the running of the government and ensures that their interests are protected. All in all, we can say that democracy has been largely successful in transforming people from mere bystanders into responsible citizens.